So the league's winding down. You're looking for something easy, something simple, and something to get the job done. Your life's getting a little more hectic. There's not a whole lot of time to play, and you need something that'll allow you to pretty much still farm currency, but just kind of let you do your thing. Now, playing before you is one of the coolest, most interesting things that has been brought to my attention. My buddy Diggs told me about it, and a few other people were playing it. And this is the AFK Simulacrum Magic Fine Farming I Don't Do Anything or Press Any Buttons Chieftain. You see before you, this character pretty much just stands still. It doesn't do anything. It just kind of just kills Wave 29 and Wave 30 Simulacrum, no problem. And it just does it all while, you know, doing nothing. I was a disbeliever at first until I tried it myself. I would start a wave and I would go do what I had to do and originally, you know, come back, move my character to the other side of the earth, you know, simulacrum and go walk away again. And, you know, it's, it's, it's dumb. It's silly. It's crazy. It's wild. It's a character that can do a whole lot. And you see, it's just, you know, you pretty much don't need to do anything. You're not at risk of dying. You can clear the simulacrum. You can just farm to your heart's content and it can do other things. It doesn't have to only be a simulacrum farmer. I have used this to do magic finding. I have used this to do other things. And I showed it on stream the other day for just one simulacrum because I was kind of hoping for a voices and you guys went wild and you guys were asking and asking and asking. And you're like, where's the POB? Where's the video? How does it work? Can you show us? And well, Today, I'm going to do that. Today, we're going to walk you through it. I'm going to show you what's cool about it, what it does, how it functions, and we'll get all into the nitty gritty of it. So let's stop watching this and cut on over to the character. So before you, we have our character. He's pretty much just kind of hanging out. Oh, my wrong button. We have our gear. We have our magic find swap. And overall today, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on, how he works in the skill tree and stuff like that. In this simulacrum video, we did it with non magic find boots and gloves, and then I'll do a showcase to show you what it looks like with magic find. But first, let's talk about the gear, how it works, and how it functions. First off, instead of using simulacrum, we're using a more in depth or like a higher budget variant, or I don't know if we would want to call it budget, but we managed to put together a weapon. It has fire damage over time on it, burning damage, and then I have veiled chaos fire damage or veiled increased fire damage on it pretty much with this weapon i bought any base that had damage over time on it as a fracture and then i threw scorch fossils at it until i got half decent suffixes it took about 50 scorch fossils to hit fire damage and burning damage i locked suffixes veiled chaos orb took increased fire damage and called it a good day the weapons to buy i didn't realize there were some on trade for like 40 div 30 div sometimes you find them for 20 div you know you for the weapon you just really have to scout around the base doesn't really matter as long as it's a scepter uh, and gives you elemental damage. You really don't care what tier of base it is. You just need the fracture if you're going to craft it yourself to make it really easy. In our weapon, we have a shield charge, a faster attacks, and a vitality setup. We're actually shield charged so that, you know, we can just navigate around the map a little bit more. We also have phase run. You know, it's fine. Our rings, we have just the standard venters. You can use any venters that gives you, you know, resistances, quant, the rarity count, we don't care, and just some life. I'm pairing it with a winter weave. I actually don't know what this other ring is supposed to be. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a Calandra's touch because we're ailment immune and this doesn't do anything. So I'm pretty sure you're supposed to put a Calandra's touch ring there. I just didn't know what else to put there. I was trying to move off of a magic find setup to do simulacrums and stuff like that. But the build was so strong that I just kind of like threw whatever on and didn't even think about it. So I put on a couldn't be poison winter weave. So I didn't have to think about poison so I can actually change this flask out. So as far as the second ring goes, I'd probably just use a Calandra's Touch. The helmet, if you've seen my Fulcrum video before, this helmet is the exact same helmet from there, except I wouldn't use this helmet. I just had whatever I had in my inventory and grabbed it and threw it on. This helmet's really interesting. I would rather have the helmet as follows. Mana Reservation, Chaos Resistance, Damage, uh, Fizz Damage Taken is Cold. The fracture for fizz damage taken is cold. It doesn't really matter. You can actually craft it in the in the prefix as the 8% from the bench craft. So what I mean by that is with our helmet, we can actually take um do it, do it, do it like this. Yeah, we can actually do this craft instead. So you don't need this fracture, you can actually get this instead, which would be really nice. So you can get like in your suffixes, you can do mana reservation chaos resistance is what i should have done and then rarity if you're going to magic find and then your helm prefixes would be life rarity and then the the bench craft for the fire um taken as your helmet too 
really important to note you want to reduce as much fizz taken as so we do have the fizz taken as lightning on the helmet to give us a little bit more tank we also do have area of effect because we want to make sure that when our chieftain does our chieftain things and things explode they explode and they hit everything now in our helmet we have a cast when stun set up and enfeeble a frost bomb and a desecrate essentially what we want to happen with this character is we want to make sure that we're hit and we can be afk since we're afk and we get hit we want our skills to pretty much do the auto bomber thing so our skills will automatically cast every time we're hit if i take out my cast when sun and i desecrate you'll notice that i have katara katava's heralds in my desecrate pool i didn't actually know about these i didn't know these were a thing my buddy gilly told me about these and these are definitely the specters that you want or the corpses that you want in your desecrate pool to get katava's heralds um you know i'm not even actually sure where they come from i'm assuming they're coming from the katava fight but you can ask in general chat people will get them to you you can come to my discord you can ask somebody there i can help you get them or other people can help you get them essentially you just want to have somebody desecrate katava's heralds on the floor for you you use ray specter raise them up and as soon as you raise them up and have them they are in your pool forever but essentially what happens is, is now when we desecrate, we'll desecrate these Katava's Heralds. These things have a massive amount of life, and those are the corpses that we're going to explode for big explosion damage. Our amulet, just like always, it defines the destiny. This thing is unbeat. You really can't beat this thing. This thing is crazy. It's insane. It's really good. It's out of control. I would really recommend using this amulet. The role that really matters on the defiance of destiny is the missing unreserved life role. The higher to 35 you are, the better you'll quality it with life and mana it'll put it really high really nice we put vampirism on them vampirism on it so that we reduce the amount of damage that we take and it's just you know it it really does it does a great job of keeping you alive and you see when you know in a bit when we do the magic find map it does just everything you want it to do now a little change of pace since we're not using the fulcrum and using a scepter we need a shield there is this shield the rise of the phoenix mosaic kite shield this gives us cold res you know this gives us more maximum fire to say cold resistance i was thinking of a different build this gives us more maximum fire resistance because we are chieftain because we are not fulcrum and because we are warlock instead of charms we need a way to cap out our fire resistance we need a way to get it to that magical 90 and this helps us get us there you'll see in the non-magic find setup i'd actually need to redo the gloves to get the 90 but we'll be at 90 when we go to the magic find setup our shield has a corruption on it for fizz taken as cold if you get the shield as fizz taken as cold it is not very expensive it is roughly two or three divines if you were get it as fizz taken as fire it is like 50 divines if you get a fizz taken as lightning it is very cheap again while fizz taken as fire is pretty good you can get fizz taken as cold and still be okay and not struggle and suffer our shield has a flame surge set up castman stun and blade vortex essentially what happens is is we want to use castman stun in our shield with flame surge and blade vortex so that we can hit the mobs and constantly be debuffing them we use blade vortex um i'm pretty sure to cast the flame surge i'm think i think that's what's going on i actually you know what don't even know you know i have no idea what the blade vortex does but i'm pretty sure it's the cast the flame surge or just keep hitting mobs i don't know that's just what was in the build and how it was i know the flame surge is really good and i know the flame surge um ignites the enemies leaves burning ground and makes them take more damage it's actually really noticeable to not have flame surge now that i look at the, the blade vortex i have no idea what it's even for so if you know you know let me know strikes enemies in front of you burns them if hit blah 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 yeah i don't i actually have no idea what the blade vortex is for oh it's for something for something yeah anyways moving on this is what happens when you copy things blindly and you don't ask questions you just realize that you're going to tell other people to copy things blindly without asking questions blade vortex is there for a reason i should probably figure that out if you know let me know somebody's gonna watch and be like wow you're an idiot I'm like yeah you're right our gloves or our shield or our chest uh what is this a chest plate cloak of flames this actually speaks for itself fizz taking his fire more fire resistance you really can't beat this this armor is pretty much everything in this league this armor has kept a lot of you guys alive this league this armor is awesome with this setup though you need the plus one maximum fire res that's what puts you at that magical 90 when you're magic finding our armor has detonate dead now there's two ways you can do this you can do this with detonate dead or you can do this with detonate dead of chain reaction i actually really like detonate dead of chain reaction 
Uh, in earlier waves of Simulacrum, in later waves, I actually prefer de regular Detonate Dead because it does more damage, but you can experiment and have fun and try them both. I have an item Rarity support in there for while I'm Magic Finding, which you don't need when you do Simulacrums. I have a Culling Strike support, which is really nice for killing bosses, Deadly Ailments, Cast One Stun, and Awaken Burning Damage. You can actually make this like Unbound Ailments or something else to get more damage, especially if you're doing Simulacrums and not just Magic Finding. But overall, you know, this, this setup is really nice. We do tons and tons and tons of damage. It just does everything we want it to do. For our gloves, we have a dexterity roll, chaos resistance, fire resistance with max life. If I were to redo the gloves, I would do them with veiled plus two level of AoE. With plus two level of AoE, you'll be at that magical 90 fire resistance that you really want. I got really lazy when I was doing the gloves. I had these already done. I grabbed them as is and I put them on just to kind of go experiment with the build and have a little bit of fun. The Eldritch Implicit on the gloves, we want fire damage over time multiplier and we want to inflict exposure on hit. The inflict exposure is really nice for the blade vortex. That's why there's blade vortex. <laughs> so that we can hit things and apply exposure. That's what the blade vortex is for. <laughs> Our gloves have petrify blood, purity of fire, enlightened support, and arctic armor. This is so that we can stand still and not get blown up. This is so that we have a ton of life pool for our divination dissolute and recoup. All right, that's what this is for. This is so that we have additional fire resistance <laughs> and the enlightened so that we have RMR. Unfortunately, this is another one of those builds that you need enlightened for to really get rolling. Now, in terms of mage blood, I have not tested this without mage blood. I am assuming that you need the stats on mage blood and the ability from the flask to stay alive. I wouldn't really try this build without mage blood. I've had people tell me they have tried very similar builds with headhunter and I've had people tell me they've tried very similar builds with biscos. It has worked for them. I can't speak for it. I haven't tried this variant with Biscos. When I played the Fulcrum build, you did not need Mage Blood. The Fulcrum build worked really, really, really well without Mage Blood. So I'm assuming this will also work somewhat as well without Mage Blood. And if you were to put the Biscos on or Headhunter or other belt options, you would really have to just kind of readjust your flask to suit those and have the flagellant mod so that you gain flash charges when you're hit. And then you should be really good to go with a belt swap. Our boots, our boots are really interesting. I'm using Legacy of Fury here so that we can uh, scorch an enemy or scorch enemies burn. We have just a ton of effect of scorch enemies for four seconds, dealing 8% of their life is, you know, fire damage. These boots are really cool. They just gives us nearby enemies are scorched and things explode and burn and die. These boots, I think, are out of this world fantastic and, and they're really good. You know, they come from the Mave and a lot of, you know, RF people used to use it. But I think these boots are really good and they give you a ton of extra damage especially when you're not magic finding. Do you really need them? No. Do you need the corrupt? No. Are they nice? Yes. Do they do the job? Yeah. What do you care about this? You only care about the effect of Scorch roll. Everything else is extra. I have been told that Scorch only works in 30, 40, and 50, that 44 does nothing. So you either have a 40%, a 30%, or a 50%. Everything in between doesn't do anything. Um, please let me know in the comments down below or correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I, from my understanding, the effect of Scorch doesn't really matter outside of having an even roll. Our boots, we have a Frost Blink, Malevolence, Eternal Blessing, and Phase Run setup. The Malevolence on Eternal Blessing is that's how we run our Malevolence without having to worry about the extra mana or costs. You can see I can shut all of my auras off, and if I hide my face for a minute, you see that we can just kind of turn this on. There's no cost or cast to it. All of our auras are pretty much done on life we have no mana no issues for mana no needs for mana no want for mana and that goes in hand in hand with the warlock and we'll get there in a second when we get to the pov or when we get to the actual skill tree our flask we have an increased movement speed flask on a quicksilver we have an immune to poison as poison is one of the few things that gave me a hard time if you roll your map so that mobs don't poison you you don't need this but because my maps are unidentified and i don't remember what the hell is on them or if they have poison or not i have this poison immune flask um, if you have a ring that has can't be poisoned, if you have a ring that has can't be poisoned, you wouldn't use this suffix on a flask. You would use something else like more armor or life regen or rarity. Like there are plenty of options that you can use. You don't need to use exactly that one. But at the time I didn't have the winter weave with the can't be poisoned. I forgot I had it. So I just rolled can't be poisoned on my flask and I've just kind of been rolling with it. Our Sapphire Flask has free shock and ignite during effects. So this is how we get our ignite cap or how we get to 100% chance to ignite. So you have to make sure that you have this suffix on some sort of flask. I have a Sapphire Flask for reduction of cold. 
because I have the shield giving us reduced damage taken from cold. Ideally, I would like to fit in a topaz flask somewhere for the helmet to reduce the amount of damage taken from lightning. I thought about removing the quicksilver flask, but then I'm like slow as molasses. And I thought about getting rid of it and just using shield charge to move all around the map, which is probably actually the play in the grand scheme of things. But I've been really lazy and I've just kind of been enjoying the free speed without having to worry. Our last flask is a ruby flask. We have it so that we can avoid being shocked at all costs. This is so that we can tie it in. I think I have a storm shroud somewhere in here. Uh, where is it? Immutable force. This. Yeah. You need this effect on the flask so that you are ailment immune from the storm shroud, which is why I was saying earlier that the winter weave doesn't do anything, but you want to have, you know, a better ring. So this just pretend it's Kalandra's touch. Ideally, the ruby flask, the Tempest flask, and the sapphire flask give you a lot of mitigation towards all the elements. Since we're converting a lot of fizz to elements, we want to make sure that we just don't die to elements. So this flask is just, you know, the suffix on this is needed somewhere. It doesn't matter which flask has a suffix as long as you have avoid being shocked. Now, our ascendancy and our passive tree goes as follows. We are a chieftain so that nearby enemies have, you know, they take more damage while we're stationary because we're an AFK build and we stand still a lot. This really procs all the time is really, really nice. We want the explode. The explode has spoke for itself this entire league. Everything has exploded and died. Everything has been great. Nothing has survived. Everything has felt the wrath of chieftain. I actually really like this ascendancy and the rework a lot. I know some people still don't, but I really do. I really like this note a whole lot. We take Tessalia's cleansing water so that all of our resistances are through the roof and we never have to worry about resistances. We're also unaffected by a knight. We do have to take this though to get to Valico Storm Embrace. This is what gives us our resistances across the board to everything to make us that beautiful 90. I know I keep talking about that 90 and I just want to show you when you have plus two on your gloves and you put your auras on and you click everything, you do go into 90. You are 90% all res. As far as everything else, we are Warlock. We're Warlock for a couple of reasons. One, we want, um, I have no idea how to pronounce this, Sangumancy. Our skills cost life instead of mana. Our skills reserve life instead of mana. We remove all our life and 50% of our increased life reservation of skills. This is the node that allows us to fit everything onto life. Without this node, you cannot reserve all of your auras, which is really unfortunate. The other really interesting thing about Warlock is it gives us Penance Mark. I'm sure you guys have heard of Penance Mark. I'm sure you guys have played with Penance Mark. Penance Mark is one of those really cool, interesting skills that allows us to cast a mark on a target. That mark will spawn demons or shackled phantasms. Those phantasms will hit you and they will trigger your Desecrate. So on big mobs, when you're magic finding that don't die or in your simulacrums, if you're there and you see Kosis is wailing on you and he's not dying, you cast Penance Mark a couple of times. They make phantasms, those phantasms die and explode and help create that new ignite and get that chain rolling again. Penance Mark is probably one of the coolest skills in the Ascendancy. And if this leaves, I'll actually be really sad to see this leave. I've used this a lot this league. It's one of my favorite things about this league. Outside of that, Warlock really doesn't give us a whole lot else in terms of the big notables. One thing that's really cool, since we're doing Magic Find alongside with everything in this character, we get increased quantity of Wisps found. These small nodes are actually insane in terms of giving you extra wisps throughout the wildwood, giving you more results when you're magic finding. And I, I personally really like them a lot. One of the coolest things about this build versus the Fulcrum Chieftain um, charm build is we don't need to rely on charms. We could put that money elsewhere and get the similar or same results that work really well. In terms of our tree, you know, we just take all the standard stuff, you know, the extra resistances to get to 90 cap. We have a that which was taken. The only thing on this that which was taken that actually is, you know, meaningful or that you should be looking out for is chance to cover rare unique enemies in Ash. This gives us a ton more damage. I managed to find this one. I got this one pretty cheap so that I get onslaught on kill and cover rare enemies in Ash. This one was really sweet. I got this for like 40 divs. I don't know how much this one is. I'm too scared to price check that which was taken. So these things explode out of control all the time ever. But if you were looking for a mod on your that which is taken, I would look for the cover rare enemies in Ash. And then if you can, just kind of take a look for the Onslaught effect node and see kind of what happens. And hopefully they're not too expensive. They're actually pretty cheap, thank God. Because somebody's going to look for these and they're going to be really mad at me because they don't exist. Like this one that doesn't exist because that's just what happens. Unfortunately, we did need to take this Dexterity node and Int node. It's kind of unfortunate, but it does happen. We did take Champion of the Cause and this RMR node here so that we could fit some more RMR here. We have hits against you. Cannot be critical strikes if you've been stunned recently. We've been stunned every single hit. 
So we cross our fingers, hope to not die in the initial hit, get stun immunity, and we're pretty much good to go. Also, 10% damage taken from stunning hits has recovered his life. Um, so we just have, you know, just more life regeneration. We take blood magic, so we get 10% more life. Skills cost life instead of mana. We pretty much take this so that we get extra life, which is really, really, really nice. Juggernaut, we take reduced damage from critical strikes. Eventually, what will happen is, is you'll just be crit immune when you, like, fix up your gear or get more gear or get better gear. And then you can remove some of this stuff because you're just going to be crit immune. And it'll be really nice. I have an empty jewel socket here. We're going to talk about that jewel in a minute. I forgot to grab it from another character. We have a life mastery, our bar barbarism for plus one maximum fire res. We have a large cluster that is burning brights, smoking remains, widespread destruction. This cluster is... Um, the other day was like 30 divs. They're coming down. They're 10 divs. They're not that hard to make, which is really interesting to say. You can actually buy the base. So I'm going to pull up Craft of Exile. I'm going to show you guys really quick how to craft this cluster. If I pull up Craft of Exile and I go to Cluster Jewels, Large Cluster, and I go Fire Damage, I want Smoking Remains, right? What is it? It's... uh. Burning Bright, Smoking Remains, Widespread Destruction. So we want Burning Bright, Smoking Remains, and Widespread Destruction. Things to note when trying to craft your own clusters. The eye level is really important. Widespread Destruction is level 1. Burning Bright is level 50. Burning or Smoking Remains is level 50. From there, you see that the next major notable is at 68. And then 75. So when doing these clusters and trying to self-craft these clusters, one of the best things to do is to look for a cluster with an item level between 50 and 68. So if you're going to ask how to do that, I will actually show you. If I were to open up the Path of Exile website and I were to hit the trade, search items, and I were to come down here, there is an item level tab. Where is it? Item level, and I do 58 to 67 because we don't want a 68. And then we would just put large cluster jewel hit search and then just press this little button we want to we want this and then we want to put fire damage oh whoops we want an eight passive i lied yeah i will actually include this trade link for you down below in the description to make your life a little bit easier Unfortunately, the bases are about two divines each. Uh, when I made the clusters and I crafted them myself, the bases were still two divines each. But the real kicker was the cluster at the time was like 35, 40 divines each. So I made them myself. To make this cluster actually isn't that bad. You just take the cluster to harvest. You reroll fire. You pretty much do that until you have burning bright smoking remains. And then you exalt slam on widespread destruction. Widespread destruction just has a really high weighting. It is pretty easy to do. Or you could just spend like 10 divs and buy the clusters on. If you have questions about the clusters, you're really confused, you don't know what to do, come by the Discord, ask in the crafting help section, leave a comment down below. We'll, you know, walk you through it or write it out for you. It'll be a little bit easier. The other cluster here, Circling Flames, or Circling Oblivion, Fan the Flames. Fan the Flames is really important. You need a cluster that has this. This is what allows your ignites when you kill mobs to spread all around. Outside of that, we have Blood Notch and Mutable Force. I happen to have from forever ago a blood notch with corrupted blood immunity. You don't need a blood notch with corrupted blood immunity. That's what this other jewel socket is for. You get a nice rare jewel with corrupted blood immunity. It doesn't matter what the hell the stats are on it. Just get a nice rare jewel with corrupted blood immunity. Stick it in there. You do, on the other hand, want your immutable force to have a probably like 980 or better. You just want to have a sun and block recover to be pretty high so that you could just recover from your stuns pretty easily and move away and kind of do things. One of the things that you're going to notice from this is if you have a really bad immutable force and you're trying to magic find, it's going to be a really tough time, and I'll show you why. And that has to do with the weapon swap, which I need to set up. Outside of that, everything else that you need to know, you know, we have another cluster that's burning bright, widespread destruction, smoking remains. And then we have two towering dominance or asserting assert dominance towering threat clusters. These give us more air of effect for our explosions, and they give us, you know, more air of effect when we kill a bunch of mobs. These are really nice clusters. They're what help you do the Legion. I know Legion on an auto bomber build is really weird, but I'll show you guys how to do that. And lastly, our jewel sockets, they're just burning damage, damage over time, life jewels. You know, you could put this one here, and then you can get another one and put this one here and just kind of roll with it. We have a Storm Shroud that we talked about. The Storm Shroud pairs really nicely with our flask. That's what gives us our ailment immunity. And then we have a Watcher's Eye. 
the only mod that's really important on the watcher's eye i bought this at like day three of the league you do not need this watcher's eye the only mod that's important on this watcher's eye is physical damage taken from hits is fire damage that is the only mod that's important on this watcher's eye this is just what i had lying around this is just what i socketed in and this is what i use for pretty much all of my builds all the time ever the only line that's important is the fizz damage taken as fire this on a on a watcher's eye with a 10 percent roll is whoa these are expensive i hate this game <laughs> i really don't <laughs> just this league dude this league is something else oh my god i was worried about that that which was taken as a watcher's eye it was expensive anyways <sighs> that's it that's the build it's actually really sweet it's a lot of fun i really enjoy it a whole lot it's it's pretty cool it's really easy to play and overall you know there's not really a whole lot that you need to worry about when playing it so in terms of other things when you're going to magic finding you set up to do your magic finding abyss right now is all the rage but the big problem with abyss is abyss dies especially if you're playing an ignite explode build like chieftain so before the little cut one thing that i was going to mention was is you should have a weapon swap for cold iron point and dawnbreaker dawnbreaker pretty much to keep you alive but essentially what happens is, is when you're trying to do abyss abyss will you know blow up and things will be sad and you'll miss loot and all that fun jazz and the way that we stop this is with cold iron point and i know a lot of people are going to ask about magic finding and i'm going to pretty much show you guys what i'm doing now my magic find setup is pretty much the standard you know you have everything you have the legion the abyss the beast the beyond uh you know all the fun jazz i have rolled my maps to be unidentified corrupted we have our sextants we have our blue we click our abyss and overall i'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through now hopefully knock on wood i don't have to redo this map 40 times to get a good wildwood uh the wildwood has been changing a lot very weirdly i don't know maybe i'm just crazy but have you guys noticed the wildwood changing have you guys noticed there are more walls or less wisps very strange very very strange i don't know i wonder is wildwood going core hmm anyways we're gonna hop into the wildwood and we're gonna look around so we see our two trails we're gonna follow our nice little trail we're gonna pray that we don't accidentally run into this nice lovely wall here oh well there's a there's an event let's go the other way so we have an event there We'll follow this seems that we've gone the a complete opposite way of where we were supposed to go but we found another event which is really nice so we have one what looks to be east one looks to be west um i don't know let's see what happens if we go up here do we get another third event oh baby this one's gonna be a good one okay i mean event event and event let's go we'll come back we'll clear this um oh wait they changed the wild but i have to clear this now right right we have to clear this now we're just kind of like afk here a second nice and this is where penance mark comes into play because we can now we can just penance mark this guy and we can get the little the little penance guys and they'll set off the chain for us and we don't really have, you know don't have to worry too much now because you don't have two curses you do have to read penance mark every once in a while to get the chain rolling again i do need to change my loot filter before i crash completely uh this put on our magic find loot filter and let's go find or see if we can attempt to find the last event there's some purple there but that's just gonna lead us to the primal huntress right nice now we follow this purple oh my god are we gonna have what if what if this is the map i've been looking for a mirror forever now what if this is the map what if this is it oh my god could you imagine just capture it on video people would be in like crazy disbelief that's a wall okay so we still have some wild wood juice left let's uh let's try not to rim yet Let's see if we can uh, find another trail of wisp really quick. This is like the best worst part of everything, right? Like you do the wildwood. Actually, you know, I don't mind doing this. I think it's actually kind of fun.
There's some blue. Dang. I was really hoping to find more blue. This is fine. All right, let's grab our life force really quick. Looks like we're going to have like a nice little map to showcase to you guys with the Wildwood and how tanky and beefy this character is, which is going to be really nice. We we'll just kind of stand here really quick. We'll kill those. We'll stand here really quick. We'll kill those. Come up here. We'll grab all that life force. We'll wait for these guys to kill us really quick. We'll cast a little penance mark to help move everything along. Cast our penance mark again to kind of get the chain going. You know, with Fulcrum, it was really interesting because you would do this with Fulcrum and it would take so long to kill these like interesting rares. But with this setup, you you kind of do everything really fast and it's it's actually really nice and enjoyable. You know, except for the fact when they don't attack you. But otherwise, I mean, you know, we're pretty much okay with everything, right? Oh God, did I actually miss a bubble right there? How unfortunate. What is this? Reduce flash charges. I mean, whatever. Right? We have Mage Blood. That's fine. We are going to indeed check the vendor. Leech is instant. Blind and Onslaught. One div there. We're not going to take that. What is this one? Okay, we're not going to take any of those. And then is that everything? So what are we at? Three, four, five, six, six K juice. Not bad. It's a really good average map, right? Three colors. We're feeling pretty good about this one, right? Maybe. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait, this is a, this is a big, wait, 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 wait. Hold on a minute. This is a big ass map. This is a really big map. You know, it's like, like, just like what you want, right? Like, this is it, man. I was really hoping for a little bit more purple. Get that nice 4,000 in there. There we go. Nice. Four, seven, eight, nine. Mm. All right. So I'm actually going to move my face so you guys can see my health bar on this one. And as soon as we find a legion, we pretty much have... So the only downside to this build is legions are a little bit rough to do. They're not the easiest. Simply due to the fact of the nature that you need things to be able to hit you. And when things don't hit you, um, you know, you can't really proc and spawn a legion. So while you're looking for everything, you want to make sure that you hit your legions and that you break out your legions or you do your best to break out your legions. Now, you don't want to really kill the legion mobs until you do everything else but you you know you want to like break out your legions i guess we like miss stuff in the legion i thought the aoe explosion was more than enough there i guess not all right let's uh get away from that the only downside is i'm not really too sure what else i would replace legion with i really like legion especially in this magic find setup or in the magic find world. I don't know about on this character. So if you guys have any good suggestions for what I can replace Legion with, please, by all means, I'm, I'm, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts because I, I'm honestly not too sure what I should be replacing Legion with. Maybe boxes? We, are we back? Are we about to be like box gamers again? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I get a lot of the Legion here. So I'm, I'm pretty happy and pretty content. Now, I'm not going to cut this video out yet. I'll finish the map. I know you guys probably want to see how I do Abysses because a lot of you guys are going to be playing this and you guys are going to be really interested in seeing overall how Abysses work. But overall, this is it. This is how you do the map. This is how everything goes. Now, when it comes to Abysses, we're going to start the Abyss. We're going to chase the Abyss just like normal. And then as soon as we see, you know, as soon as we see the, the Spire spawn, you'll know the Spire spawning when the Abyss circle there goes away we're just gonna move away you know we're just gonna kind of just afk do nothing wait for things to die
and this is it see man this this is crazy this is such a big map and we just like not a care in the world no fear at all oh no i missed it did i accidentally kill it i might have accidentally killed it i wasn't paying attention no no there's a spire spire's still alive okay so we weapon swap so that we can deal some damage to the spire now you come here you look at the spire we need things to hit us to start setting off the chain the spire is dying 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 we run away we weapon swap so now we're on cold iron point we run away and we weapon swap we wait for the spire to do spire things and then we come back and we just kind of afk again and then we wait for spire things to happen nice nice winged explosion puzzle box my god oh man this map was juicy dang dang dude look at this thing it's insane crazy absolutely crazy and then pretty much we're just gonna do the exact same thing over here we're gonna come over here we're gonna get a nice little explosion i actually like looking at corrupted uniques sometimes you find some really good ones um if you i know my loot filter's got a lot of crap on it if you want to use my loot filter and you're interested in it you guys can stop on over by the twitch stream um and type exclamation point filter in twitch chat it'll give you a link i'll also if you guys really don't want to do that i guess i could like post a link oh look another divine dude we are this map this map was a juicy one an absolute juicy one i really kind of want to go try to loot those wings right now but i know that's a huge mistake I could kind of like, I guess, start looting. That's one of the cool things about this build. You're just like, kind of like AF. Wait, is that a spire? Oh no, it went up here. Okay. You know, it's just one of the cool things about this build. You just don't care. You just kind of like, just the AFK. That's the spire, that's the spire. Okay. So we're gonna keep an eye on the spire here. We're gonna wait for some mobs to spawn. And we're just gonna watch the spire health for a minute. As soon as we see, oh shit, run away! That started ticking down real fast. You saw as soon as the spire started ticking down and burning really fast, I used phase run to run away. I pressed my weapon swap so I was on cold iron point and I just got the hell out of dodge and the spire was able to do spire things without essentially just kind of like losing everything, which was really nice, man. There's so much cool loot in this map. Oh my God, dude. This is what we live for in terms of the magic fine world, right? Just like juicy maps like this. Look at this, man. This is crazy. And just not a care in the world. We don't have to worry about headhunter buffs. We don't have to worry about dying. We just loot our map. Things are sweet. Oh my God, this map is gonna take me forever. I just wanna get some of these wings, man. I just am really curious to like, how many wing did we get here? This is insane. I know Jingle's gonna be watching this and be like, yeah, that's what we live for. <laughs> now, if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I'm actually pressing my Z key over and over so that I can reorganize the loot in a way that makes it easier to grab it all. Oh my God, is my inventory full already? Dude, I can't even loot all the scarabs. Well, I guess I do have a lot of crap. All right, cool. So did we get all of the winged? It's like the thing I care about. We're gonna have to like come back and reloot. loot Well, there's still more. There's more. My God. Anyways, yeah, man, this, this, I mean, I'm not gonna loot the whole map on here, right? It'd be a little crazy to loot the whole map on here, but I just wanted to grab some of those wings before God forbid of like a crash or something. But yeah, this is the map. This is how you do it. This is, you know, this is the build in a nutshell, right? Like everything's really simple and easy. And once again, we'll do another quick abyss. You know, we'll phase run. We'll follow the abyss. No problems, no issues. You know, we'll grab another quant one that didn't show up earlier. And we just kind of just ARK our way to like riches. You know, you really don't have to worry. You don't have to think I can get up and walk away. I don't have to worry about anything, you know? If, you know, something comes up or like the dog, the cat, the husband, wife, uncles, parents, girlfriends, sisters, cousins, Aunt Jackie needs you to do something, you can walk away from your map, not worry about risking losing portals. And overall, you just get to like 
live your best life now in terms of like what's on this map i pretty much use the exact same regex as i did on my other chieftain build you can find that regex in the other video i'll post it again here for you guys this way you guys have it handy and pretty much just cater your regex to what you as a person or what you feel that you need i'll do my best to give you guys the information that you need and then we're just gonna watch the spire watch the spire watch the spire watch the spire Okay, weapon swap back. My whole computer's exploding. Oh, we got something else over here. Did I get my mirror? Dude, one of these maps is going to give me a mirror. One of these maps, man. Come over here. We'll do this. We're just AFK. Like, ah, it's... Bro, I'm 59% in the level from this map. Is what the heck is going on? Yep, that's it, man. Oh, I'm sure somebody's gonna ask. I forgot to show off the sextants that I'm using. Um, we'll actually show off the sextants in a second. Just kill these mobs really quick. And see, this is a mob that wasn't dying, and then we just cast Penance Mark, and it just immediately starts dying. Now, in terms of what this set map is, what am I doing? What's going on? We are slaying enemies from beyond. We are unidentified pack size. We are a legion. We are abyss. And, you know, Atlas tree. See, man, you're just, just not a care in the world, man. It doesn't even matter. Just not a care in the world. Kind of like just... AFK. Nothing matters. Just wait for things to die. You know, move around a little bit because you're bored. Try not to stand in the, you know, swirling abyss of fire. Penance mark this guy so he dies a little bit. We have Frostbomb, by the way, so this guy can't regen. So for anybody wondering, this is a perfect example of why this build has Frostbomb in it. Good God. Hello. Nice. Kind of AFK again. You know. Just infinite loot. I really wanted a Abyss Wing Scarab, and I don't know where it is. It's in a pile up there somewhere. <laughs> Eventually, I'll be able to get to it, I guess, huh? Is that a Legion boss shooting at me? Or is she just bugged? Oh, no, she's right there. All right, whatever. You come up this way. Can, can I drag you this way? It's amazing how, like, even, like, Legion bosses can just be, like, shooting at you, and you're just like, yeah, whatever. Nobody cares. It's okay. Whatever. You got me. You know, I feel like if I, like, played, like, a Tornado Shot character, I'd be dead a hundred times over. Then again, I'd probably have, like, a billion headhunter buffs and all this stuff would be dead as fast as it spawns. So it probably wouldn't matter anyways. But I do know, like, in every other character, every other Magic Point character that I played... You know a map like this i would just rip and fall over every single time so being able to know that i can like actually like like these guys these guys are the devil man right like if you don't kill these things right away these things are like these are guys they come out of cell and they just end your entire existence right we just don't even like there's just no fear at all you just don't care you just kind of hang out and you just you know you re where are you going my guy give me my mirror why okay buddy and that's it man that's it man that's the whole map you know but for now friends i'm gonna get this video out to you guys and i really want to take one second a big big shout out to you guys the community my buddy digs for telling me about this and like you know without you guys i wouldn't be here afking and looting um 
an actual insane amount of stuff. But for now, friends, I hope you really enjoy this. If there are other really cool builds that you guys want to see this league or other really cool things you want me to try or showcase to you guys or awesome farming strategies, anything like that, please leave a comment down below. Come by the Discord, let me know. You know, I like talking to you guys and hearing what kind of crazy things you're concocting and coming up with. And for now, friends, I'm going to get this video out to you guys and I'm going to go loot this beautiful map. See you guys in the next one.